Let us introduce ourselves. Uh, Go ahead. Um, we have here Tucker Trainer, a great agent with Lander Realty Group. Hey, Tucker, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Um, just doing great, excited, and super, super happy to uh, be doing this seminar with Lander Realty Group. And yes, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Fatima, Fatima Abraham. Um, I'm an agent and I'm so um, blessed and happy to be working with my buyers and uh, uh, helping people to get into uh, their new homes. And here we are. So let's start this buyer seminar. Thank you, Nicola. Yes. So we have some misconceptions uh, about the buying process. Um, it's a it's a sort of a I think there's some stigma attached to buying a home and what goes into it. So Fatima is going to start uh, with uh, the first question. Yes. So we have all uh, this idea that you need a very high down payment uh, to to buy in a home, and that is not true. The people doesn't know that there is uh, an option of uh, three point five percent of money down for an FHA. Uh, that's when you start with an FHA. And that's, of course, uh, an FHA loan. Maybe it's like a sort of information for another seminar. However, this is an option of how to start going with a low down payment, 3.5% for an FHA loan. And then, of course, you have the conventional loans uh, starting with a 5%, 10%, or 20% of money down. And there's an option of a BA loan, the better loans loan, with as little as a zero down payment. Isn't that great? It's amazing because you, you I think the common misconception is that you need 20% down to buy a home. I hear my clients, and I, you've heard your clients say it all the time, that you need a lot, okay. but you can actually do it with as little as 3.5. So it's refreshing to remind ourselves of that. Um, going on, um, renting versus owning or buying. Obviously, rent is expensive in Los Angeles and homes are expensive in Los Angeles. But with renting, you know, you're basically paying off someone else's mortgage. Um, you're building equity for someone else and that money is doing nothing for you. You're basically burning it. Obviously, there are situations where we need to rent, um, you know, short term or, you know, you're not quite ready to buy. Um, but buying is so important because it builds equity for you and your family. And obviously that money, you're, you know, you're paying to your mortgage provider, but it's not really leaving your, your net worth. You know, you're paying it out of your account, but it's actually building equity in the property. Um, so obviously we, we want to buy if possible. Um, rent can be a little, a little steep in Los Angeles. <laughs> That's right. And I can say something, uh, Tucker, uh, buying a home is the only way how you can make a lock on your monthly rent. That's the only way that you're going to secure that. Uh, uh, otherwise, if you continue renting, uh, your landlord is going to be increasing your monthly rent every year. Sometimes it's like uh, for so much money that you didn't have in your budget and you're going to, oh my gosh, how can we do that, right? So it's better, always better to buy than to rent. Yeah, and the goal for a lot of our clients um, this is more geared to first-time buyers, but a first-time buyer will become a second-time buyer, will become a third-time buyer. So the goal for a lot of our clients is to buy, hold, buy a new home, and rent out the previous home. And that's sort of this idealistic American dream sort of type, type idea. Um, so yeah, and you know, off the down payment conversation and renting versus buying, I know you wanted to discuss a little bit about credit scores because people also think you need uh, perfect credit to buy a house, which is absolutely untrue. That's true. That's another thing. Uh, sometimes people have this conception that they need to have like a perfect credit score to apply for a mortgage loan. And that is not true. You need to have as low as 620, 620 uh, FICO score to apply for a loan. Uh, of course, the better the credit score, the better the interest rate. That's how it works. So, you know, it, it's up to you and how you can manage your credit score. We always recommend uh, to to have it like a like a good credit score so you can get a better interest rate. But you can start with as little as uh, a 620 credit score. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's a lot more, it's a lot easier to buy, so to speak, is what we're trying to tell everyone um, than it seems. And I know it sounds like a scary process and um, in some ways it can be, but you know, it's a lot easier to get into a home than you would think. 
Yes, yes. You and can that's go why, to the next slide. <laughs> yes. That's why we, we always um, tell our clients how important it is to have someone who's going to guide you through the process because it's not that hard. It's go back and forth. There we go. Uh, there we go. It's not that difficult when you have someone. So what we can say also is what is required uh, for the employment stability. You need to have at least two years of uh, employment if you are employed with someone or if you are self-employed, you can be also an independent contractor uh, because you obviously you need to uh, show uh, what's your source of income? How How is that you um, are going to pay for that property, obviously? So you need to have at least two years of employment. It doesn't need to be consecutive, but at least you need to prove that you have been uh, employed for the last two years or that you have your um, self-employment. And at this point, the other thing that is very important, I'm going to go directly now to the taxes, why it's important to have your taxes declaration done year by year? Because if you don't do your taxes, you will not be a subject of credit to the financial declarations done. That's very, very important for the mortgage process. The Absolutely. lender is going to ask you for that. Yeah. So you take care of all those things to sort of get the ball rolling with a lender or bank. Um, and then we get a question a lot about the fees associated with buying a home. Obviously, you're buying a home, so that's a fee in itself. So there's the down payment, um, what your mortgage will be. And then other fees that go into the process are inspection fees when you inspect the property um, and things known as closing costs. And I know we have another slide on closing costs, so uh, we'll, we'll follow up with that there. I just wanted to sort of plant that seed. But there are other fees, and they're usually about 0.5 to 1% of the purchase price. Um, in addition to the cost of the down payment. Yeah. That's, that's important. Yeah, it's, it's always good to have that into consideration. So you, you need to have like some money ready, some funds ready for that, right? Exactly. Yes. yes. <laughs> Moving <ready>. along. <laughs> yes. <laughs> proper representation is very, very important. It is a question. I'll you proper... I'll... Go ahead. I'll let you touch You, you go ahead. You go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's important you have someone who knows what they're doing and is thoughtful and knows the market. Um, I think realtors talk a lot about how much they are involved in a certain market. And that really does matter, especially in this competitive market. Um, you need to have someone who knows how to represent you, write a solid offer, advise you in multiple offer situations, um, and push the ball forward in the transaction. So you need someone who is aggressive, but also understanding. Because we obviously work with a lot of first-time home buyers. Um, and it can be a very, um, you know, it's a very new process to some people. So you need someone who's going to guide you, make you feel calm, but also know when to push. That's right. And also an important thing is someone who knows the market. Because sometimes, like in a city, there are different markets working at the same time. So you need to know that um, how the properties are being sold in that area so you have comparables handy so you can uh, tell your client how the the market is working and how can you offer uh, a price for that property so it's important that uh, that agent that's working with you knows the market and i completely agree i don't think we talk about this enough in our business but it's really important having a good reputation and knowing other brokers because, you know, here our network is so vast and working with someone like Jennifer, we have connections to all these high profile brokers. So when you're dealing in a multiple offer situation and you've done a deal or two or know the person, the listing agent personally, um, you're able to get more information and better advise your clients. So it's not just about um, a transaction tra transaction basis. It's important to have someone who has connections as well. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's always called building relations, right? It's how it matters. It's very important because you you start that uh, relationship and uh, we have seen it uh, with Jennifer. She's been working with clients for years and they continue working. That's how they, they develop that relationship. So that's very important when you work with someone you trust and someone who can guide you through this process. Yeah. 
Definitely. So, and in the next slide, we can talk about this important word, the contingencies. It that is sounds like a weird word. word, right? What are contingencies? <laughs> And I know Tucker is an expert in contingencies. Uh, we were talking about that, um, that there are like different contingencies, like about 12, but the most common ones are three. And I that think. is that is true. Thank you. Um, yeah, we have an inspection contingency. Well, in, in essence, a contingency is a deadline we have to meet within a transaction. In these contractual periods, uh, our buyers are protected to cancel the transaction without incurring any fees or um, losing their 3% deposit, which is standard in a transaction in California. Um, so these are really important to keep a tra track of because if for any reason the buyer needs to cancel or we find anything wrong with the property, we're able to safely protect our buyer, which is most important to us. That's one of the most important parts of our job is advising correctly and protecting our buyer in all situations. Uh, but the most common three contingencies are the inspection clause, the inspection contingency, which is the period in which you inspect the property and you can uncover, you know, whatever you want to discover about the property, foundation issues, structural issues, mold issues, and you're able to cancel based on that. The appraisal contingency uh, and the loan contingency, the appraisal is when your lender sends out a licensed appraiser and they value the property. And if it's not in sync with what the actual contract price is, um, they won't loan on the, that, the full amount. Um, so you're able to pull out based on a low appraisal is what they call it. And then the loan contingency can entail, can be sort of looped into the appraisal contingency if you're careful, but it really means um, if anything falls through with your loan uh, or your underwriter or your lenders unable to perform what they contractually were obligated to, you can actually cancel the transaction based on a loan falling through. Yes, and in terms of uh, contingency periods, usually what we are seeing right now is the shorter the contingency periods, the better. So now we are seeing, for example, like seven to 10 days of home inspection periods. Uh, we see like 10 uh, to 12 days of appraisal contingencies and the long like 17 days uh, of contingency periods. Uh, so as, 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 you, as you said uh, beautifully, uh, Tucker, the contingencies for the buyers is a protection. So as a buyer, you always have to make sure that you are covered with your contingencies. If you're not sure about something, um, you need to have your contingencies because that would be the option to back out of the of the transaction in case something is not really like you know uh, like in good condition it's like so pricey to make reparations in the property um, or maybe the appraisal it's too low that you will have to pay like out of pocket a lot much more for that uh, property so you will be always covered with your appraisal basically and um yeah, something important to talk about here in the inspections is to not forget that the inspections, uh, you will have to pay as a buyer, you will have to pay uh, those inspections. And those inspections are uh, sewer inspection, uh, general inspection of the home. Uh, you can have also the termites inspections. Um, you can test for asbestos, for example. And those are separate fees that you need to add to your bill. So you have to consider that. You can really inspect anything you want. I mean, you can you could do 30 inspections on a property if you want, but just like Fatima said, you know, you're usually doing mold, sewer, chimney if there's one, general, and um, termites. Yeah, exactly. And when it comes to the appraisal, you have to pay a fee. That's a buyer fee that you have to go out of pocket like about 700, depending on the on the appraiser uh, so you have to consider consider that fee as well yeah indeed and, and yeah so moving forward so based yeah. off this idea of contingencies and what they mean um, obviously it's a competitive market uh, but we're still able to have we're still having success with buyers and you we're able to do this by 
if possible, shortening contingency periods that Fatima touched on. Um, shorter contingencies mean less risk in the seller's mind. Things move quicker and transactions can become what's called non-contingent or completely binding a lot sooner. Um, so, you know, we were seeing seven to 10 day inspection periods. Now we're seeing, uh, you know, three to five. People are inspecting very quickly, if not at all. Um, and that's where I, number B comes in. People are starting to remove. We have clients removing contingencies like the appraisal or loan, if their loan has already gone through uh, underwriting and received what's called conditional approval. So those are ways to sort of gear your offer, at least your initial offer, a little bit better. Um, and if the seller comes back and says, you know, we need to shorten these periods, uh, you know, it's best to do so uh, if we feel comfortable being able to move forward that fast. Uh, and something that is always very important is to have a straight and open in communication with the listing agent or how we call it the other side, because you need to know what the seller is looking for, right? So you need to uh, have a, a conversation, an honest conversation and ask the seller looking for. Sometimes they need to stay for a longer period or for a, at least for a specific time uh, after the close of escrow. So you can negotiate that uh, in the, in the, um, contract. So you can do a lease back. And in that case, you become a landlord of the previous owner. I know that sounds kind of confusing, but that's also an option um, that can be worked out. So basically, communication is the key. Communication is the key. Communication is the key with our clients, with the other side, like you said, um, this is very important. So I think we can move on to the next slide. It's very exciting information. <laughs> yes. And this is beautiful because when you hear the word, uh, yes, your offer got accepted, you can say, yes. <laughs> but then you're like, That's wait, amazing. we've done all this time shopping for houses. What's next? So exactly. we wanted to condense it in, in the shortest way possible. Obviously, there's more that goes into this, but this is sort of how it looks. Um, offer accepted, yay, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, the first thing you're going to do is schedule inspections and fully inspect the property. During that time, you can negotiate with the seller based on the findings. Yes, and based on findings, based on what you have seen. And in um, today's market, there's not, um, sometimes there's not so many things that you can negotiate. But yes, yes, because there's, there's always room for, you know, like, uh, an agreement between parts. So if there's always like interest of moving forward, something can be done. So you can you can always talk to, to your agent and see what, what is needed to be done. There's always an agreement in the end uh, when it comes to negotiation of home inspections or repairs. And then um, when you, you have done the, uh, if everything is great, uh, the property appraised so we can move forward to the to the next step that will be um the ones approved the your loans are approved you can go directly and basically you're almost you're almost there you're almost there to get your keys it's it's this is a, we like we said we simplified it but it, it's a, it's a, it seems it's a very simple process but it's very nuanced um but the last thing we'll say is we're, you're going to be docu signing a lot of documents. You're going to be signing a lot of things. Um, so we always say just be ready to be on your phone or on your computer, just clicking away um, at at documents to the transaction. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's uh, that's how today's uh, documentation is being um, you know signed. However, there's always option if you're not that tech savvy, if you don't have anyone who's by your side helping you to sign signing right like back in the old days when you used to have the hard copy uh, and you used to sign everything by hand like that's always an option of course things can it, be done it can be done it can be done and we make it possible we do we will make it possible <laughs> yes all right moving so, uh, on moving through this Yes. So closing costs, like I talked about a little earlier in the uh, presentation, they're not factored into the purchase price. Um, and these are limited to, aren't limited to escrow fees, title fees, 
property taxes, which you, you can impound, aka prepay, um, and miscellaneous other fees like document preparation fees. And we like to estimate this is about 1% of the purchase price. Um, so this is additional money that you will need to have a set aside to pay to close the transaction through the transaction. Exactly. Yes, Tucker. So be ready to have those funds available for the escrow fees, title fee, pay, uh, other miscellaneous fees, as, as Tucker said. And it is important that you have that in mind. Uh, during escrow, they will tell you, like in the middle of the transaction, um, that approximately your costs, your closing costs will be like an approximate of these, these and that number. So you can have that in mind. You can be ready for the closing, for the closing date. By the way, something that we have not mentioned um, is the, the close of escrow period. Usually I remember years ago, the people should say, oh, we're going to be in escrow for 45 days. No, that's not what is happening right now. It's it's been for um, a shorter uh, 21 days, 25 days uh, for the close of escrow, basically. So. And shorter escrow periods, which we also did mention, can be more attractive to sellers in this market. So if your lender is able to condense that period a little bit for you, it can make your offer, even knowing, even if you don't need to, being able to close a little sooner is always more attractive to a seller who's ready to move. That's correct. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Tucker. Next slide. The importance of That is of very important. So, this is why we're here, um, right? <laughs> going to this. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, and this is beautiful. I love, I love this slide because why is that important? The home ownership is the most important investment of a family. You know, why is important? The home ownership, because you build equity, right? You are not paying someone else's mortgage. You are paying your own mortgage, something that you're building for your family, right? Yes, absolutely. And you're able to write off a lot of things involved in the home ownership, like improvements. Um, and like we said earlier, you're building legacy and generational wealth. So you're able to put money back into yourself, back into your family, rather than someone else's wallet. It's going to you. Um, and that, like we said, and to the left, real estate has been voted by this. This is through Gallup poll, the best investment eight years in a row. And the statistics don't lie on this. And anyone right. who owns property can say the exact same thing, especially in our market in Los Angeles. Um, yeah. We've seen a tw over 20% appreciation in the last year, which is astronomical. That's that's really that's really something to think about. Imagine, yeah, appreciation. Wow, yeah. So yeah, real estate is always the best investment that you can do in your life, and that's a legacy. You're building a legacy for your family for years to come. It's 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 gonna be always appreciated, not depreciated, definitely. So yeah, the statistics don't lie. It's there. It's I even agree. better than crypto. <laughs> <laughs> we can say that. <laughs> we can. Yeah. Uh, I think we yeah. have two more and then we'll, uh, we'll conclude. This was one Fatima I wanted to put in, which is a great question because we get this question. I get this question probably, you know, twice a month. People think that they have to pay me to show them houses. But go ahead, Fatima, you had a good take on this. Oh, thank you, Tucker. Yeah, this is the $1 million question. Who pays the buyer's agent? Who pays us? Uh, so basically, you don't have to pay us anything. Uh, we work for free for you. Who pays us our commission is the seller. The seller is the one who pays us our commission because that's even, you know, like that's uh, uh, previously negotiated. And yeah, that's how it works. So we work for you free. You know, we, we, we give our time until we finally go into a negotiation, into a transaction and everything closes. That's when we get our remuneration. That's how it works. Basically, you want to add something, Tucker? 
you cut out for a sec, so I didn't hear the last thing you said, but I think you said, um, uh, forgive me if I'm, I, I misheard you, but, you know, obviously a seller pays us, mm -hmm. but yes. uh, I did want to add that, you know, that's why picking proper representation is so, is so important because we are truly working for you. So someone who's working to get you into homes, to show you homes, is truly invested in you. And as, as a buyer's agent um, and obviously listing agent advocate, uh, at, sorry, sorry, buyer and seller advocate, I, um, you know, we, we work hard, we work hard uh, and that's important. That's why it's important to hire proper re representation as well. That's right. I've heard like, uh, oh, you're a real estate agent, you open doors. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not just like that. We do so much more than that. We have knowledge that comes from our expertise. Is uh, doing our research all the time. That, uh, what are the market trends? What is happening right now? Uh, we we have to do a lot of um, you know negotiation with people. We have we have to put so much effort, time going here, going there. We we have to do a lot of things. I and, and I know and I love I love my work. I really love what I'm doing because most importantly, the value that we provide, the value that we deliver is. Helping the families, helping the people to to make their dreams come true. That's Absolutely. what it is. Yeah, in the best, in the best and the biggest investment of their lives. Yeah, buying a home. Yeah. So yeah, I don't more know. slide for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> is it a good yeah. time to buy? Everyone's like the market, so everything's so expensive. Is it a good time to buy? And it may sound counterintuitive, but it is still a great time to buy. And that's because interest rates, while they are higher than they were last year, they are still at historic lows. So we include a, a graph from Fortune to the left of the slide. But that basically means borrowing money is still exponentially less expensive than it ever has been in history. So that's true. Yeah. So we're looking at, you know, prices are high, but we're also looking at the fact that um, your monthly payment can be substantially lower. So if you can afford the monthly, you know, we want to we want to pay less attention to the purchase price and more attention to what you can afford on a month to month basis. It's the better way to look at things, in my opinion, um, because interest rates are still very low. Yeah, so that's what's still making affordable to buy a home, even though the prices are high. It doesn't matter because the interest rates are still low, so you can still make it and you can see here 2022 we have a 3.64% approximately of interest rates. Uh, we have seen them there. They're estimating that uh, maybe they can go around 4%, but we will see. But still like that, still being in a 4% or higher, uh, it's still a great time to buy a home with these interest rates. Absolutely. Yeah. So that is it, everyone. We appreciate you. Uh, jump in on this call in this presentation. I hope you got some valuable information out of it. Um, these yeah, are our, our Instagrams. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we, Thank if you, you have any questions, now's the time. Uh, we're happy to answer a few questions. If not, this is going to be on our podcast and it'll, this will be saved to our website, I believe, as well. So this will be accessible for uh, as a resource. Yes, yes. Sorry, uh, Talker, you cut off a little bit, but yes, I just uh, have to say also. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy and grateful for, for this presentation and for what we do. Hopefully, this can help you and um, you got helpful information from this one.